All right, um, so we're just, I'm going to uh, open with prayer. Um, but uh, yeah, we're talking all about family today. So all the songs have kind of been looking at family and it's like, you know, it's almost like we planned it like that for some reason. Um, because we did. Uh, <laughs> well, you and did. He said, we're talking about family, gave me verses, and then he played the music. So it's, it worked out perfectly. Um, but yeah, we're just going to open prayer and we'll, we'll get on with it. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for a chance to gather together in your house as family, as part of your family, as part of family with each other. Lord, it's, it's just a blessing to be able to come before you and be part of your family and take part in worshiping you and trying to understand you better and get to know you a little bit better and uh, worshiping with others. Please give us a great day. Uh, help me speak good words and uh, help people listen. In your name, amen. So, <clears throat> this week we're looking at family. Um, and uh, I was going to put a picture of my family up there, but I didn't want to embarrass them. So I, I, I found this one on the internet because that's us. That's totally me. Um, yeah, sure. Sure it is. Um, <laughs> exactly what I look like. Those legs are that skinny. Um, so yeah, but we're looking at what it means to be a child of God this week, and that's what we're kind of looking at. So family is something we see referenced everywhere. We see it on cars, on like, you know, you all see on the, that became the new thing, I don't know, about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, where you saw uh, people would put their family members on the back of their car. Um, and then people started putting stuff for, like this up in, in people's cars because they didn't care about your stick finger family. But you see it referenced everywhere because the family is literally the thing that society is all based around. So, and then, of course, we have the patron saint of all families, uh, Vin Diesel. Uh, if you don't know, he, he's in a movie franchise called Fast and Furious where he says family a lot. It's all it's like, I'm not fr I don't have friends, I have family. And he says it with this really deep voice. Um, but it's true. It's like family. There are people who you're born with that are family, and then there are people who become family that aren't blood but become family. And then there's what we're talking about today. So this week we're talking about what it means to be a part of a family of God. Um, so it's like because that family looks very different. Um, so we're, we're looking at two sections of Scripture. So in the first one, we're going to look at, uh, put it up there for me, Dylan. we're looking at John 1, uh, verses 9 to 13. So the beginning of the book of John. So if you got your Bibles, pull out John, I'll give you a second. But in the beginning of John is where we get, in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were made through the Word. So there's that cool section talking about how Jesus is the Word, and Jesus made all things. And so this is coming into that. And so it says, the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, he be who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So that's the first section, um, and we were mainly focusing on like the last two verses, but I wanted to give the context of all. So let's take a closer look and get into it and, uh, and see what each verse is. We're going to do this with this section and the next section is what we do. Um, so let's go, verse 9 starts, the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. So this is talking all about like how Jesus literally is the light that gives life to everything, and he was entering the world in bodily form. He came as a child and then grew up and became a man. And so this is basically him entering manhood, entering personhood, as opposed to he's always been God because he always is God. But this is him entering history in an actual body. So then it goes, he was in the world and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not recognize him. People have a hard time then and have a hard time now recognizing Jesus. Um, because reasons. There's lots of reasons. Um, a lot of the time it's because we just were too busy focusing on ourselves. But the world didn't recognize him then. He came, literally there was all these prophecies made about him within his own people. And he showed up and did a bunch of them. And they still went, no, I don't know who this guy is. So uh, then it comes to, he came to his own. And his own people did not receive him. So yeah, Jesus was rejected by the people that he literally had set up in history to be his people. 
the Jews were literally God's people. He literally said, you're going to be my people. I'm going to put a sign on you. You're going to be mine. I'm going to be your God. And then he literally came to those people and they went, no, I don't know who you are. Um, so that, was, that must have been hard on a lot of levels because <laughs> you're being rejected by the very people that you literally made to be your people. But that opens stuff up. So it says, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So the fact that he was rejected by his people um, literally opened it up for everyone to become children of God, not just his people. He didn't just come to save Jewish people. He did come to save Jewish people, but not just Jewish people. He came to save everyone. And so it goes on and says, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will, or nor the will of man, but of God. So God chose us. God literally was like you. And so like everyone take their, their hand and put their finger up and then point it at themselves. It's like you, literally you. He chose you. He wants you to be part of his family, which is mind blowing on so many levels. But so um, that's the first section, and we're going to get more into the, like the stuff with that. But that's but with the Bible, it's always. But wait, there's more. Um, it's it's like one infomercial because there's so much in the Bible. There were so many passages we could have looked at today about family. We literally like picked and chose a few, but there's so many that talked about being part of the family of God and why God wants you part of this family. So we're going to, like, but, you know, there's things to do. We don't have all day. There's football on later. There's food in the oven. All that stuff. So we can't be here all day for that. Um, so we're, we're just going to look at one other section of Scripture, uh, and then we're going to, we're going to actually, we're going to sing one song at the end, that very first song. So I'm prepping you in now. Um, we'll do that song again, because I, I was, as I was pushing the slides, I was like, wow, yeah, that one's on point. Um, although most of them were. Um, so we're going to look at uh, next, what's the next one? We're looking at Romans 8, and it's 12 through 17. So I put it on two slides because there's a lot of text there. Just hold on one second. I even put it in my notes, take a drink of water, and my mouth is all dry, and I'm like, I missed it. So I'm going to just take a drink of water. Jesus is the water that I live by. Which is true, but it's also you need the actual H2O. All right, so we're going to read through it all um, like we do, and then we're going to go back and look through it each time. So um, Romans 8, 12 through 15, and then it goes 16, 17 on the next slide. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, or not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live, but if, or, sorry, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness to, with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. All right, so let's take a, well, we'll take a, a closer look a second time. So we're doing a double for this one. So let's go. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not, of, or not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. Now, who here, show of hands, has ever been in debt? I have student loans still to this day. Um, and yeah, I've, credit cards are a thing and all that stuff. Debt sucks. It's it, like debt is a real thing. And it's, it's almost, unless you're incredibly a privileged person and, and either lucked out with a lot of money or like born in the right family or did this or did that. Nigerian prince, I guess, I don't know. Like he's always trying to give money away. Um, we're all in debt. And so debt sucks. And so this, this verse literally talks about the fact that we were debtors to our flesh, but we're not because we don't live according to the flesh anymore. So it says on the next one, For if we live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Now this isn't legalism. This isn't talking about like, if you do this enough, you're gonna be, you'll be able to live and go to heaven and all that kind of stuff. Because we're never going to be perfect this side of heaven. Not one of us in this room will be. Um, that's the spoiler alert. 
So uh, you're, you, we're not going to be perfect. But with the Spirit, we can put to death the bad parts of ourselves. Now, this doesn't happen like that. I wish it did, but it didn't. <laughs> um, but it's a process, and the Spirit every day helps you move closer to being more and more like Jesus and helps us push the good parts of Him forward and push out the bad parts. So this, this isn't talking necessarily about like, you know, if you do enough things, you'll live. No, it's, it's the Spirit literally helps us not pay the debt to the flesh, but pay the debt to God that we owe because we owe a debt. So, and then from, from the next part, it goes, for all who are led by the Spirit are, are of God, are sons and daughters of God. So let that sink in. If you have accepted Jesus, you are a son or daughter of God. You are part of a family. You have, you're there. You're part of the family. That's mind-blowing because I don't know, like, I don't know where your family's at. Some people have awesome families and some people have terrible families. I've met a bunch. I've been part of both sometimes. It's the way life works, right? But you get to be part of the family of God. You get to be a son or daughter of God. And then he goes on to say, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Now let's just be really clear. Let's, let's clarify. Not that Abba. It's not, that's a group from the 70s. Not that Abba. Um, Abba, for anyone who doesn't know, means basically means daddy in, in Hebrew. That's what it means. It's, it's a very familiar term. Uh, Jesus would refer to God as, as Abba. And some people would look at him like he's nuts because you, you generally didn't call God Father the same way because it's a very personal thing. Um, my daughters call me daddy, or they used to. Um, one of them still does. Um, because it's just, it's a very, like they've known me since they were born. And so I am this person to them. I am, I'm not father. They may say that is my father, but usually they'd say that's my dad because father's too formal. But dad or daddy, like we get to call God that because we're part of his family. And then we're talking about adoption. So it talks about the receiving the spirit of adoption. Now, there's this uh, comic strip that I saw years ago. Um, adoption is very, very important to me in my family. Um, my wife is adopted. She was adopted uh, by by parents. Um, she, her mom had her very young, her birth mother at 16, and put her up for adoption. And uh, so she got adopted. So that's always kind of been, since I got married, that's been part of my story is that I'm married to someone who's adopted, and that's very important because she was taken out of one family into another family and made part of that family. And we, since moving here, we have taken uh, someone in, in Gracie who's part of our family. Uh, she moved into our house. She was living somewhere else. She came to live with us. And just recently, like, it got to the point where she's like, well, aren't I part of your family? And I was like, yes, you're totally part of our family. So it's like I now have three daughters here instead of two. Um, it's a really big thing, being made part of someone's family. And adoption is this beautiful thing because we have children. I have two daughters that are born of my wife, and they're amazing, and I love them, and they're great, and, and stuff. But when you adopt someone, it's taking someone out of something else and bringing them into your family. And so you can't choose who your kids are when you, you give birth to them. They're your kids. And like my kids are awesome. I'm just going to clarify. They're sitting right there. Um, I love them. But bringing someone in from the outside and making them part of your family, you're saying, look, I want to make you part of us. And it's a huge deal. And that's what literally Jesus was doing when he's like, you're going to be part of the family. So now then it says the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So it's working together with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's job. On earth, like, the Holy Spirit is God. That's just, the, the Trinity thing is really confusing, but it, the Holy Spirit's God. But his, his kind of job on earth is to, is to make us more like Jesus and to bring us closer into the family and make us more tight-knit. He's, his job is to draw us to the family when we're not part of it, and then once we become part of it, it's to make us closer in the family. How awesome is that? It's incredible. And then it says, and if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with Him in order that we may be glorified in Him. Now, 
This does not mean we all have to get crucified before anyone jumps to that because it says we suffer with Him. If you're a child of God, that means that people are not necessarily going to be your best friend sometimes because they don't like God. And you have to be willing to say, no, I'm still part of that family even though you don't like me. I'm still part of that family even though it may not be what you like. Um, suffering with, with Him looks very different for very different people. Um, but it's, it's definitely not like you have to do everything He did because that's not what it is. It's much more we should live for Him and put Him first. And that means you're going to not put yourself first, which is going to sometimes cause you to suffer. But it makes you an heir with Him. So, which is, this is the word heir, is, is the big one. Um, have you guys ever heard of someone like the lost heir of a family dynasty where it's like a child is found that was like given up for adoption and that's the lost heir of an empire and, and they didn't know that they had all this thing? Heirs being heir means you are welcome and you are equal status with the other children of the family. You are, you are literally welcome in, and have access to everything in the family. So, um, so the question is, how do we get part of that family? So um, I volunteer as tribute uh, has become a big thing uh, to be part of, <laughs> of God's family. And how do we do that? So this awesome picture was taken by my wife, uh, and then Zion photoshopped it into this cool thing. So it's Gospel Time with Shepherd. How do you become part of the family of God? You've got to accept Jesus. If you've never heard this before, which I'm pretty sure everyone in this room has, but I'm still going to say it anyways because you know someone may not or doesn't know it fully. So Jesus, we were separated a long, 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 long time ago because we sinned as humans and we've messed up and it's a part of our DNA. And literally God went, no, you're going to become flesh. So he literally took on flesh, became Jesus, became son, did everything on earth perfectly, then died for our sins and took every sin we've ever done, everything we ever will do on top of himself. And all you got to do to enter into that family to get that awesomeness is accept and say, I repent and I want to go with you now. And that's it. There's all this other stuff that comes with it and you'll become more, like you don't have to, I saw this awesome video where the, this pastor was talking about the fact that to, to become a Christian, all you need to do is like repent and accept. And they're like, yeah, but what about becoming a better person? And it's like, no, 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 no. That, that, that's if you have to become a better person, then you're working your way into the, the kingdom. That's not about becoming a better person. You become a better person because of it. You will, you will be changed at a core level because of it and do things differently because of it. But you don't have to do the things differently to get... There's only two things. You've got to accept and repent. Those are the two things. And it's, it's this amazing thing where he's like, you want, want to be, he wants you to be part of his family. So much so that he was willing to die for it, for you to be part of his family. Now with that, we are heirs. You accept Jesus, you're heirs with him. You're literally, like God sees him and you as equals. Even though he's Jesus. And I'm definitely not. <laughs> But he sees us there. So I'm going to talk to you about this week, um, how you can think about this. So this is a, a picture of homeless people. Now, I heard this story a long time ago when I was a kid about this woman who was homeless, living on the street. She begged every day. And when she died, she literally found her on the street. She died of the cold one night. And they, they, as they were taking away her body, they found ID on her. And they're like, check the ID and, and found out that this woman was part of a family that were ridiculously wealthy. And she had a penthouse. She had a penthouse, not the family had a penthouse. She had a penthouse in her name. She had millions of dollars in a bank account. But she didn't want to be part of that family and didn't like, just was no interest in that and literally lived on the street and died on the street. And when they found it, they're like, look at all this thing that she had access to, she had part of. And it's crazy because you go, why wouldn't she take advantage of that? Why wouldn't she be like, why would you go live on the street when you could live in the penthouse? Why would you, why would you ask for sandwiches when you could be given caviar? Not that I would eat caviar, that sounds gross, but I don't know, Popeye's chicken. Um, they don't have that here, what's here? Chicken shack, but no, I don't know. But. Um, why would, you, why would you possibly 
settle for this and live this way when you have that. But I'll be honest, that's a lot of the way that Christians live a lot of the time. We are part of the family of God. We are heirs with Christ. We are literally part of God's family, yet we go around the week and live the week where we're not. We don't live like we're part of that family. We live quite often like we don't know them. And so I want you guys to understand this week. We are children of the King. So there's this awesome picture. This picture is from uh, the one good movie they made out of the series for this thing called Narnia, the Chronicles of Narnia, the Why and the Witch and the Wardrobe. And literally these children become kings and queens, and they are royalty, and they are fully part of God's family. And they live like that. And now, I don't expect we walk around this week and start telling people what to do because we're not that kind of kings. We're not <laughs> but we are part of God's family and we represent God as part of His family. And everything we do this week and every, every interaction we should have, that means we're representing our family. We're representing our father. We're representing our dad. And I think we need to keep that in focus because it's a thing I 100% will tell you that I forget quite often. I don't live like I'm part of this amazing family. I quite often live like I'm begging on the street. And it needs to be ingrained in our souls that this is who we are. God literally took us from that and put us in family and made us family. And <laughs> just it's all about family. And we get to drive fast cars and be with Vin Diesel now. Um, and here's the, the thing I want you guys also to think about. If you're in the family of God, that's not just, well, you and God. That means you're part of the family. If you look around the room, if you've accepted Jesus, you're part of this family. The churches all around here, they're part of that family. Now, as part of family, there's family that we always don't necessarily get along with. And that's okay. You don't have, that doesn't mean we're all going to, like, everyone's going to agree on everything. There's going to be things, especially minor things, that people agree with thinking it's the most important thing in the world. But if you're part of the family of God, you should act like you're part of the family of God. And that means if you meet someone else that's part of the family of God, it should be, we're both in the same family. Isn't this awesome? Isn't it great that we both have the same dad? Even though we look different, and you may worship that way, and I worship this way. It's the core, we're part of the family of God. And so this week, I just want you guys to kind of keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to do my best to keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, that's all I got this week. We're going to pray and then we're going to sing one more song. Um, so let's pray together that we, uh, we understand who we really are as children of God. We're part of that family. We've been adopted into that family. Dear Lord, thank you so much for being willing to come down and pay the price to bring me into your family, to bring us, to bring every person here into your family. Every person in Glace Bay you want in your family. You are desperate to bring us out of where we were into this new family. Lord, I am so grateful for that. I am so grateful that you looked at me and didn't see the screw up that I often can be. You literally said, no, you're important. I want you in my family. Lord, please help us this week to remember who we are, who we represent, whose sons and daughters we are that we've been adopted and a price was paid for us to enter that family, Lord, that only you could pay and it cost you dearly. Lord, please help us this week. Please give us time and effort and patience with each other and with those around us and be a blessing to those that we can hopefully then bring into the family with us. In your name, amen.